thanks for choosing to watch the video. Uh, we're lure fishing again. Uh, this time we're fishing in nasty, horrible, flooded, coloured water and we're experimenting with crankbaits. So in my last lure fishing video, I caught some awesome perch, uh, including that four pound beast. Since then, I've peeled off the rivers and onto the lakes, mainly because the flood water just got too much. The water became too colored and too fast, and I really had no option but to uh, peel off onto the lakes. I did some pike fishing, which I recorded and I've already shared on this channel. Um, I also did some carp fishing a bit of winter carp fishing with some really nice handmade floats, just fishing worms, that was a lot of fun, and I'll share that with you at some point soon. But now I'm gagging to get back onto the river, um, but the rain keeps coming. Uh, the water's still really, really coloured. Usually I'd give it a couple of weeks, uh, but it's early March. Um, we're approaching the end of the river season, so uh, we really haven't got any choice. Got to make the most of the last few days on the river. So we've got to get out there regardless of the conditions, but there's still loads of coloured water out there. So I've decided that it's time to think outside the box. And I've decided to experiment with crankbaits, which might come as a bit of a surprise, given that in my other videos, you can see I, I usually use soft plastic on the rigs that I've described. But there's a couple of reasons why I've decided to experiment with crankbaits. The first reason is because I've decided to use rattling crankbaits that make a noise in the water. Um, obviously I figure with visibility being low, maybe that's gonna help me increase the chances of landing some fish in this, this, these impossible conditions. The other reason is that I have noticed that in the dying weeks of the river season, that more and more chub are being caught. And I've, in fact, I've caught them myself, um, most years towards the end of the river season on creature baits. So the chub do seem to respond quite well to lures right at the end of the river season. Um, and for that reason, this style of lure, a, a, a classic crankbait style chub lure, you know, in a small size, could land us a fantastic chub. I have noticed that other people, as we've gone in towards the end of February and early March, they've started to land good chub. That includes Perch Finder TV. Uh, check out Adam's videos, they're absolutely amazing. He's been landing some clonking chub on creature baits. And like I say, myself in the past, I've landed chub towards the end of the season. So I'm kind of curious to what happens. I've never really targeted them with chub styled lures towards the end of the season. And I'm kind of curious to see what would happen if I do use these crankbaits. Let's get out on the bank and I'll try and explain a little bit more about why I'm taking this approach with my fishing. Okay, so with all this coloured water, it's time to try something else. A tiny little crankbait. The vibration on these things is insane. Uh, this one's the Rattling Hornet. So we've added a little bit of rattle into the mix. It's a floating lure, but actually dives quite quickly. Uh, to a few feet and I mean, you can feel it vibrating so much in the water. I mean, just look at the rod tip, look. That's how much it vibrates in the water. 
like I say, with, with all this coloured water, we need as much help as we can get. Um, if they're struggling to find the lure by sight, then let's see if they can sense it via vibration, you know, using other senses of the fish other than its sight. I mean, it's vibrating so much. I feel like definitely with this coloured water, it's worth trying crankbaits or chatterbaits. Uh, or bright lures. You know, going onto your white creature baits or light coloured creature baits. Time to try something different. They dive pretty deep, pretty quick. Well, this one does. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this. Um, if anything, every now and then you need to pause just to let it come up in the water a bit. Don't know if you can hear this. But that is the rattle from the rattling hornet. Whoa, and something's grabbed that crankbait. Oof. Nailed it. Look at that. Nailed it. Let's just get down here. Look at him. Absolutely. Nailed here. Yes. Awesome. There you go. The hornet, the rattling hornet, crankbait. Only run that through a few times. Be interested to see how else it does in this coloured water. Fantastic. Now I want to talk a little bit about these crankbaits. Um, I'm using um, the Salmo Rattling Hornet. Like I say, it's got quite a rattle to it. So yeah, usually on the packaging, obviously it'll tell you the size of the lure and the color, but it will also tell you how deep it's gonna dive. Because, you know, these are all floating crankbaits and it will tell you on the packaging how deep you can expect them to actually dive. This one actually says that it dives down to 1.8 meters. And I've got to be honest, I used to think these were really, you know, like a summer tactic maybe, or a warm water tactic, where you're cranking these things quite fast in the top layers of water. And what I've learned about using them in the last couple of sessions is that in actual fact, you can fish these really quite slow. Uh, you might not be making the most of the rattle when you do that, obviously. Let's talk about a specific scenario that I had whilst I was fishing with these. You know, I had five or six foot of water, I had a fairly steady layer of thin um, weed across the bottom. When I was fishing with jig heads, no matter how slow I fished those jig heads, they were falling into the weed. Obviously I could reduce the weight, so it was fish falling very slowly, but you had to keep a certain amount of pace on the lure to stop it falling in the weed. What I found with these crankbaits in actual fact, is that you can keep them out of the weed quite effectively and you can still fish them quite slow. So they start on the surface and I pull them slowly down in the water and then I can let them um, come back up to the surface. Now, I can't talk for all crankbaits, but certainly these ones, they don't go flying back up to the surface. They, they actually stay suspended for quite a while. They'll move to the surface fairly slowly, which means that now I can actually fish above that layer of weed and I can actually do that quite slowly, which, you know, when it's winter still, and it is, you know, end of February, early March, it's still very cold. I did want to fish these quite slow. So don't think that you have to crank a crankbait. You don't have to fish it fast. I'm pulling it slowly down to the weed. Before it hits the weed, I'm letting it go back up. I'm in control of how slowly I pull it down. I know it's going to flow up very slow. And in actual fact, I thought it was more effective fishing 
in that particular situation than my standard jigs or a drop shot where the weight's going to get clogged up in the weed. So I thought that was really quite an interesting thing about the crankbait and it's something that I didn't really have my head around until I started using them. Every now and then I'm just pausing to let it rise up in the water slightly. It's quite weedy here. It's picking up a little bit of weed which tells me it's diving slightly too deep. I need to retrieve it a little bit slower. Maybe every now and then stop, let it rise up in the water slightly. Let's try it slowly. I mean, look at that rod tip. It's vibrating away. Kicking out tons of vibration, that is. There we go. What have we got? No, it is a pike. Ay, ay, ay. Could have been a nice size for a perch. What's it to be? Another one that wanted the crankbait. <laughs> only a baby even more rain last night even more colored but let's give it a go a different day a different stretch uh, hopefully you can see how colored it is and how how fast it's moving through um, yeah you know, if we get a bite in these conditions using these crankbaits that would be amazing it's a stretch that holds pike perch and chub um, be happy with any of those but this is a style of lure this is a style of lure that works well for chub to one of those uh, or you know or a big perch will do me just fine fact in these conditions pretty much anything will do in this fast water you can actually fish this really slow oh, so much water it would be amazing to get a fish out in these conditions uh, or should I say a miracle We've got what feels like a half decent pipe. Unless it's a chub, but I think it'll be a pipe. No, it's a chub. Oh, fantastic. It's a big one as well. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, it's a big chub. Oh, yes. Happy, happy days. Fantastic. Big chub. Just nailed that crankbait. I've kind of been hoping for one of these. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. A couple of ounces under six pound this. Uh, been experimenting with crankbaits in this coloured water. Uh, the rattling hornet have decided to experiment with something that's making a bit of noise because of the coloured water and uh, I was hoping one of these might turn up. 
What an amazing fish. Fantastic. So that was about a week ago now, and that is the end of my river season. Always a little bit sad, but um, I've got some great fishing coming up. Um, you know, the tench are waking up, the carp, everything's coming to life. So there's gonna be plenty more fishing. Um, quite happy that I managed to end the river season with that fantastic chub and on a crankbait too. So thanks for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, then please remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Like I say, I'll probably be fishing for tench and carp next, but who knows? In the meantime, please enjoy your fishing and be lucky.